Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is the complete Fast and Furious recap before number 10, Fast X. It all started with The Fast and The Furious at the underground street racing scene in LA. The new kid in town is Brian O'Connor, here to make a name for himself by challenging the undisputed king of the road, Vin Diesel, Dominic Toretto. He puts his car on the line. Yeah, they're racing for slips. Vroom, vroom, car racing time. But these races always come down to hitting the NOS button to get a super boost. Wow. But Brian's a buster who hit it too early. Vin Diesel waits till the right moment and oh, he wins. But when the cops show up, it's Brian who gives Dom a ride out of there. So he's welcomed into the crew. If you're playing the drinking game at home, have a Corona every time they do. But Brian O'Connor has a secret. He's working undercover with the feds. Yes, a team of precision drivers in souped up Honda Civics have been hijacking delivery trucks and stealing high-end electronics. They think it's Toretto, so they sent Brian in to befriend him and find proof. So Brian meets the crew, including Michelle Rodriguez, Dom's girlfriend, Letty. In fact, Brian starts dating Dom's sister, Mia, when he orders a tuna sandwich. But at a Toretto backyard barbecue, Brian befriends Dom for real. He really respects him for his devotion to family and general life outlook. I live my life a quarter mile at a time. And on the final heist, things go bad. This guy's shot. The only way they can save him is if Brian calls in a police medical chopper. Brian being a cop throws a wrench in their best friendship, but it comes down to a final gentleman's race. Dom pops a wheelie in his muscle car and they finish just ahead of the speeding train. But epic wipeout, Dom's car's totaled. Uh, don't worry though, he's totally unscathed. But now with the cops closing in, Brian gives his keys to Toretto. I owe you a 10 second car. Oh, a beautiful bromance as Brian chooses friendship over the law. Next up is Too Fast, Too Furious. There's no Vin Diesel, we just follow Brian Brian O'Connor, who's moved to Miami to be a street racer for real. Ludacris plays Tej, who runs the races down here, and oh yeah, vroom vroom, jump in the bridge! The action is kicked up a notch. But one day the feds pick Brian up, because a drug dealer's recruiting drivers, they want to send Brian in undercover again. Brian needs a partner, and with no Vin Diesel, he recruits his old best friend, Tyrese, as Roman Pierce. They also work with Eva Mendez, undercover as the drug dealer's girlfriend, and she and Brian start flirting, eyes on the road! So Brian and Roman transporting the drug money, they find a way to ditch his goons, eject Ocito, cuz! But the drug dealer's one step ahead. He's going to escape on his yacht, so Brian's got to race a yacht. But a yacht's no match for good old-fashioned American muscle. Oh, leaps the car into the yacht. Brian's back on the right side of the law, but he and Roman did pocket a bunch of the cash. Number three is the Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift, which features none of the old cast. They were going to make it an anthology series. So meet Sean, a good southern boy who's an excellent racer, except for one thing, he can't really turn. Sean moves to Tokyo, where he befriends Lil Bow Wow. He tries to join the underground street racing scene here, but there's a problem. They're into drifting, so all they do is turn. But Sean's not scared. He immediately challenges the top dog here, DK, Drift King. This nice guy Han takes pity on Sean and lends him a car, uh, which Sean immediately totals. But Han takes this kid under his wing and teaches him the ancient art of drifting. Yeah, pretty soon Sean's a drift master. But there's beef with the bad guy, and it turns into a race through the streets. Whoa, drift through the whole crowd. And oh no, Han is hit. Boom, exploded. Han dies. At least for now, more on this later. Number four is just Fast and Furious. They lost the thes, but brought back the old cast. Yes, it's a series reboot. In fact, Han is part of their crew. Yeah, this takes place before Tokyo Drift. They've moved on from stealing DVD players to hijacking fuel trucks, and the action's kicked up another notch. When the law is closing in, Dom leaves Letty to protect her, but then he gets word from America that Letty was killed. At least for now, we'll come back to that later. She was killed while driving for this drug dealer, Braga, who FBI agent Brian O'Connor is going undercover to investigate. So Dom and Brian both infiltrating Braga's crew, drinking Coronas like old times. They team up with Braga's girlfriend, Giselle, played by Gal Gadot. It's a big race to the border where they kill the guy that killed Letty and get Braga to U.S. soil. But Brian's badly injured, and with the feds closing in, it's the opposite of Fast One. Dominic Toretto lets himself get arrested to stay with his best friend, Brian. But as Dom's being transferred, yeah, Brian O'Connor leads his friends to bust him out of there. So now in Fast Five, breaking Dom off the prison bus makes Brian a criminal for real, so they all go down to Brazil. Now they're stealing expensive cars off of trains, and the action's kicked up another notch. But hunting them down is The Rock as Special Agent Hobbs. And also a Brazilian cop, Elena, who when Dom saves her life, they start flirting. Brian and Mia are still together. In fact, she's pregnant. And it's about this time the series becomes all about family. I don't have friends. I got family. They're gonna do one less job, but they need help. So they assemble a team, Ocean's Eleven style. Yes, it's a heist movie now. They bring back Roman and Tej, Han and Giselle, uh, plus these two guys who only speak Spanish, so I didn't quite catch their names. They steal this drug dealer's safe by attaching it to their cars and driving it through the streets. Oh, epic. They end up saving Hobbs' life, so he's like, all right, you guys can go, but you gotta leave the cash. But this safe's empty. Yeah, earlier they swapped him, and now our crew is filthy rich. They retire to a country with no extradition and live happily ever after. Until Furious 6. 
The whole gang's happily retired. Brian and Mia, Dom and Elena, Han and Giselle fell in love. Eyes on the road. Tej and Roman also together all the time as a best friend comedy duo. But one day Hobbs shakes things up with the news that Letty is alive. She's working for a bad guy, Owen Shaw. And if the gang helps take him down, pardons all around. But Shaw's not just some drug dealer, he's like a full-on supervillain who's gonna destroy the world. So our little family of street racers have become full-on Mission Impossible super spies. When Dom tracks down Letty, oh, she shoots him! Yeah, she's got the amnesia. So Dom has to win her heart again, the way he did the first time, by beating her in a street race. So Shaw steals some super weapon or whatever, and he's transporting it in a tank. But a tank's no match for good old American muscle. Oh yes, the action's kicked up another notch. Vin Diesel fully has superpowers now. In the end, they gotta race a plane where they get Shaw, but Giselle dies? No! At least for now, I mean, we'll see. Dom crashes his car into the plane, epic wipeout! Uh, don't worry though, he's totally unscathed. And now, with full pardons, the gang is back in LA for a good old-fashioned Toretto family barbecue, complete with Coronas. Now, you never know what the official title's gonna be. This one, they keep it simple, Fast and Furious 7. Turns out, Owen Shaw survived, and he has a brother, Deckard Shaw, played by Jason Statham, who's out for vengeance against our crew. Over in Tokyo, yeah, we're drifting. The timeline's finally caught up. Turns out the car that killed Han was no random accident. It was Shaw. But meanwhile, our crew of super spies is approached by their new CIA handler, Mr. Nobody, a real chill guy who enjoys Coronas. They need to stop a supervillain from destroying the world, and for some reason, only a team of precision drivers can do it. But they can't just drive in there, so they have to airdrop their cars out of a plane. Skydiving cars, the action's kicked up a notch. Their first step is to rescue this hacker, Ramsey, who joins the crew, and uh, Tej and Roman both have a huge crush on her. Then they head to Dubai for a chic's chic party because the super weapon's hidden inside his fancy car. But how are they gonna get it out of here? You know it, they drive the car out the window. Then it's the final showdown on the streets of LA where they gotta race a predator drone, but a drone's no match for a good old American muscle. In fact, it's Hobbs who saves the day by flexing out of his cast and crashing an ambulance into it. And by the way, this whole time, Shaw was hunting them down, so he's finally caught up to Dom for their final street fight. Thing about street fights? The street always wins. And so our family of street racers has saved the world once again. And this time Brian O'Connor retires for good because this is the movie where Paul Walker died in real life. It's a beautiful send off as he and Dom have one final race and as the roads diverge, oh, tears everywhere. Next up, it's Fast and Furious 8, but they've gone nuts with the official titles again. Our gang's on another super spy mission when, wait, what's this? Toretto goes rogue. He's working for Charlize Theron because she has hostage Dom's ex-girlfriend, Elena, and her new baby. Yeah, that's Dom's secret son. With Dom working for the enemy, our crew needs help, so Mr. Nobody brings in Hobbs and Shaw. These two start off as arch enemies, but pretty soon become best frenemies. And so as Dom stealing the super weapon for Cypher, our whole crew's teamed up to take him down. But in these movies, Vin Diesel has superpowers. The whole gang together's no match for him. In the final showdown, Cypher hacks a nuclear sub, so our gang's got a race of submarine. But who's this flying in? It's Deckard Shaw on a mission to rescue Dom's baby. Uh, Elena, by the way, was killed. So now that Dom's son is safe, he joins the fight, and a sub's no match for good old American muscle. The action's kicked up another notch, epic explosion, but Dom's totally unscathed. Now it's time for the spin-off movie, Fast and Furious Presents Hobbs and Shaw. It's a standard best friend me bromance action comedy where Hobbs and Shaw team up with Shaw's sister Hattie to stop Idris Elba from destroying the world. It's really not a Fast and Furious movie, except the characters' names and a lot of sweet driving action. And so next up, it's Fast and Furious 9, going for minimalism with just F9. Dom and Letty are retired, again, living that parent life with Dom's son Brian. But when Mr. Nobody's plane is shot down, they gotta jump back in that driver's seat. Now Central American militaries are no match for good old American muscle. In fact, the only thing that could match it is even more American muscle. And the only thing that could beat this family is more family, cause it's John Cena as Jacob Toretto, Dom's long lost brother. Yes, back in the day, their dad was a racer who died in a big car crash. When Dom found out it was Jacob's fault, he challenged him to a brother's race. Loser is exiled. So Jacob Toretto independently also became a super spy, but working for the bad guys. He crashed Mr. Nobody's plane to steal some super weapon and rescue Cypher, who's now got that Miley Cyrus haircut. So as Jacob's stealing the other half of the super weapon, he's ziplining out of there, but his brother Dom's hot on his tail and all gets him for a big brother fight. It's the tech girl, Ramsey, who ends up in the driver's seat and embarrassingly, she doesn't know how to drive. They do have a giant magnet in this truck though, so wham, gets 
John Cena's car and captures him. Now, it turns out this super weapon has something to do with their old friend Han. And yes, it's happening. Han is still alive. Turns out Mr. Nobody recruited him a while ago, and they used Shaw coming after him to fake his death. But Shaw, by the way, didn't know about this fake death. He thought he killed him for real. And after the credits, they meet up. Awkward. He's got this kind of adopted daughter now whose parents were the scientists that designed the super weapon and turns out her DNA is the key. So it's the final race against their armored car where our crew's got the magnets, whoa. But Cypher and the bad guy betray Jacob and in the moment, Don saves him. So the Toretto brothers working together flip this thing and save the day. But the super weapon's been uploaded to the cloud. They gotta stop the satellite. Luckily, a satellite's no match for some good old fashioned American muscle. Yes, Tej and Roman strap a rocket to their car, and I kid you not, they blast into space. With the action being constantly kicked up a notch, I mean, you knew this was inevitable. They destroy the satellites and save the world, but Cypher's coming in to at least kill Dom. But you know the drill, epic wipeout, totally unscathed. Jacob Toretto gets his redemption. He's still very much a wanted criminal, but in a callback to the original movies, Dom gives him the keys so he can escape. And so once again, our crew of street racers has saved the world. They celebrate with a good old fashioned Toretto barbecue, including Coronas. If you liked this recap, hit that subscribe button for more of the best recaps of TV and movies.